Good morning, St. Paul. We thank you for joining us here for chapel. We're going to have chapel every single day that we have school each day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because it's a special week. It's Holy Week, but we're not going to jump ahead too quickly. Uh, We want to begin, as we always do for this chapel, so I'd ask you to stand up and be able to give that sign of the cross as baptized children of God. We are uh, beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want you to stay standing because Ms. Schaefer is going to lead us in our first song, which is Build My Life. That was awesome. Thank you, Ms. Schaefer. Awesome talent to be able to do those both things all at once, uh, the signs and build my life on Jesus' love. We are in the season of Lent still in this holy week. And so I'm going to give you a responsive. I know you don't have your All God's People sing with you at home, uh, but when I point to you, I want you to say these words. Have mercy on us. Can we practice that real quickly? So when I point to you, you say, have mercy on us. So here we go. An invocation. Oh God, Father in heaven, have mercy on us. Oh Son of God, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. Oh God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. From Psalm chapter 51, you continue to do that as I point to you. It says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgress- transgressions. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. 
Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Amen. Can you pray with me real quickly? Father in heaven, we thank you that your word is a light for our path, a lamp for our feet. And as we open up your word this day, we get to see an incredible narrative of love, of love, of your love for us in Jesus Christ. So may these words continue to come into our hearts and into our minds and into our lives just to see Jesus and be like Jesus. I pray this all in his most precious name. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, you can open up with me to Matthew chapter 26. And this is preparing us what Jesus was preparing for um, in the Passover week. And that is Matthew chapter 26. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. Hey, St. Paul, I'm just going through the hallways trying to find people that love Holy Week. I know for certain somebody who likes Holy Week. Hey, what's up, Pastor Steve? Hey. Sunday service yesterday. Hey, Mr. Mr. Paul. What in the world? It's the one week out of the year I get to wear my holy socks. Oh, I think Mr. Potter is a little confused about what Holy Week really is. You see, holy means set apart by God. And that's what this week is. God had a plan this week to save us from our sins. And you know, I brought something with me here today. It's an Easter basket. I bet a lot of you have some of these at home. What do you like to find in your eggs? My favorite thing in the Easter egg is candy. My favorite thing to find in Easter eggs are chocolates or candy and money. This is my Easter egg and I wish it was golden. It's very pretty. Uh Uh-oh. Yay, it's a golden egg now. I like finding candy that's sweet and sour and good in my Easter egg. What I like to find in Easter eggs is candy. Oh, those are great things. But these eggs are special. You see, they tell the story, this special story of Holy Week. So I want you to follow along as we check and see what's inside of these eggs. So... I wonder what could be in here. Let's see. Wow, the donkey. Yes, the donkey reminds us of Palm Sunday. We just celebrated it this past weekend. And we talked about it last week. Whoa, what is, what is that? Oh, wow. Apparently, we've got our own donkey here today. We'll see in our Palm Sunday story... Jesus rode on a donkey. He rode on that donkey into the city of Jerusalem. And when he got there, the people were so excited to see him. They had heard about all the incredible things he had done, the miracles he had performed, how he had made blind people see and sick people well and fed thousands of people, all of these amazing things that he had done. So they lined the streets to see him. They were so excited. And they shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna! Yes, and they waved palm branches and they threw their coats on the ground for him to walk by, walk, uh, so he could walk through. And they were so excited to see him. And then our story continues here. With our next day. Ooh, I wonder what could be in here. Let's find out. Ah, yes, you know, we talked about how the people were excited to see Jesus, but not everyone in Jerusalem was excited to see Jesus. The Jewish leaders were angry, and they wanted to get rid of Jesus. Ooh. Oh, they don't look too happy, boys and girls. They look pretty angry. How about you show me your best angry face, too? Woo, that's scary. Well, you know what? These Jewish leaders were afraid because the people were praising Jesus and they loved him so much. Plus, 
Jesus had pointed out some of the things that they were doing, some of their sinful ways. So they wanted to come up with a plan to get rid of him. Well, you know, Jesus had his disciples. And one of the disciples, Judas, loved money. And so the Jewish leaders knew this, and they came up with a plan. You see, remember those coins in our egg? Well, they had 30 pieces of silver. And the Jewish leaders went to G Judas, and they said, hmm, Judas, we've got a plan for you. If we give you 30 pieces of silver, will you show us where Jesus is? And sadly, Jesus' friend Judas took that money and made the deal. Now, let's see what's in our next egg. Hmm, I wonder what it could be. Let's find out. A cup? I wonder what a cup has to do with this story. Well, let's find out. You see, Jesus went to Jerusalem for a special reason. He was going there to celebrate the Passover feast. This was a, a tradition that they did every year. We're going back to the time of Moses. You see, back when God delivered the Israelites from the mean Pharaoh who was keeping them there as slaves. And if you remember, God sent these plagues, these bad things to happen to the Egyptians and to the Pharaoh to try and get his people released from slavery. And so the last one was to get rid of all the baby boys. But God saved his people by giving them a sign to put blood on the door so that the angel of death would pass by. It would pass over their house. So every year they'd get together and they would have a feast to celebrate and to remind them how God had taken care of them. So Jesus planned this special meal with his disciples. And they went up to this room. Now, before dinner, they decided to do the washing of the feet. And Jesus told them to sit down and said, I'm going to wash your feet. Now, back then, they didn't have like nice Adidas or Nike sneakers. They wore sandals, and the roads were dusty and dirty. So if you can imagine, their feet were pretty gross and stinky. Ooh, oh, ooh, oh. oh, boys and girls, I'm glad you can't smell this right now because it's pretty bad. Wash my oh, feet. Oh, no, thank you. Well, actually, I probably should because Jesus sat down and he washed the disciples' feet. And Peter said to him, no, Jesus, you shouldn't do this. I should be washing your feet. But you know what Jesus told him? He said, no, Peter, I came to serve and I want this to be an example to you. So later I'll wash your feet, guys, okay? Later. Right now, I'm kind of in the middle of something, though. So, and after he was done washing their feet, they sat down and had dinner together. And Jesus took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body. Take, eat. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took that cup, like the one that was in the egg, and he said, take, drink. This is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. And you know what? Jesus knew something. He knew that this was going to be the last time that he was going to have dinner together with his disciples. Now, let's continue our story and see what's in our next egg. Hmm. I wonder what it could be. After the, after the Passover dinner, Jesus took his disciples, Peter, James, and John, and he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He wanted to go there and pray. Now it was late at night, and so he took them with them, and he told Peter, James, and John, he said, I want you to stay here and keep watch. I'm going to pray. So he went a little further on, and he prayed, and he prayed to his Father in heaven. He said, Heavenly Father, if there's any way that you can take this away, please do, but not my will, but yours be done. You see, Jesus knew what was going to happen. He knew what was coming up at the end, uh, end of the week. And so... But he also wanted to do God's will. Now, when he was done praying, he went back to his disciples. And they were, they were sleeping. And he said, wake up. I asked you to keep watch. Couldn't you do that for just a little bit? Okay, just a little. All right, I'm going back to pray, but I'll be right back. Okay. So he went back to the garden, a little further in the garden. He prayed again. He said, Heavenly Father, please, if there's any other way, Please, can we do it that way? But not my will, but yours be done. 
And he went back to the disciples a second time. And they were sleeping again. He said, wake up. I asked you to keep watch. Couldn't you do this for me? Just one thing I asked. Tried. Sorry. All right. I'm going back. I need you guys to keep watch. Okay. So he went back for a third time, prayed the same prayer. Heavenly Father, Father in heaven, if there's any other way, please, but not my will, but yours be done. And he went back. Guess what the disciples were doing this time? You guessed it. Sleeping again. He said, friends, friends, wake up. I asked you just to keep watch for a little while. But you know what? Jesus taught us something there. He taught us that we should pray to him when things are going very well and when things are hard, when there's difficult times. We should always go to the Lord in prayer. Now, I still have eggs in my basket, but we're going to save those. And we're going to do a, look at some of those tomorrow. We do have another fun song to sing with you now. So with Ms. Schaefer's help, we're going to sing, I've Been Redeemed. Let's hear you sing. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Filled with the Holy Ghost I am. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. As I went down. As I went down, as I went down to the garden to pray, to the garden to pray. As I went down, as I went down to the garden to pray. As I went down to the garden to pray, it felt so good. I stayed all day. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed, my Lord and I, my Lord and I, my Lord and I. We've got so close, we got so close, my Lord and I, my Lord and I. We've got so. Close, my Lord and I, we've got so close. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. You can talk about this. You can talk about this. You can talk about that. You can talk about that. You can talk about this. You can talk about this. You can talk about that. You can talk about this. You can talk about that. But Jesus Christ is where it's at. All my sins are washed away, I've been redeemed. You can talk about me. You can talk about me. All that you please. All that you please. You can talk about me. You can talk about me. All that you please. You can talk about me. All that you please. I'll talk about you down on my knees. All my sins are washed away, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Filled with the Holy Ghost I am. All my sins are washed away, I've been redeemed. We've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, and it's just an amazing thing to do is to be able to give him thanks for that. So if you could please join me, uh, folding your hands, uh, bowing your heads, and closing your eyes as we pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for the narrative that you've given to us, the narrative of love, that you sent your one and only son, Jesus Christ, yes, into the Passover feast to have that last Passover with his disciples, to show them what servanthood is all about to actually be taken and arrested. And we know that as we go forth tomorrow in chapel, we're going to see that narrative of love even unfold as Jesus goes to the cross. Father, we thank you for your love. It's like nothing else. But we also thank you that you always ask us to come and pray with you. And you've even taught us to pray. And so we pray that prayer together at this time. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord as you go into this Tuesday. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace, both now and and forevermore. Amen. Ah, oh, Holy Week, right.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.